This is going to be fun. First of two games here in Rosemont, Illinois on a Monday. My name is Eric Collins, my partner Danielle Laurie. And Danielle, people are starting to talk. What a wonderful weekend of softball we have seen from Savannah Jaquish. I mean, she is unbelievable. Looking at what she's been able to do over the course of the last two weekends is almost mind-blowing. I mean, it started with the two bombs off of... My name is Kristen Jackson, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about softball. It's a great sport to get exercise, and also you can meet lots of friends, and also you can play with other athletes from different counties. I also like that I am a pitcher for my team, for the Blue Thunder team. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Go Blue Thunder, go Crystal Jackson. Awesome stuff. Beautiful day for softball here in Rosemont. 76 degrees for our first pitch. And that first pitch will be thrown by Kelly Barnhill. And I don't want to say that I was shocked that Kelly Barnhill got to start because I believe that two pitchers can really do some damage together. Um, but we all know what Haley Wagner brings to the table. But when I look at Kelly Barnhill and her performance that she's had this weekend, she is lights out when she starts a game. There's a dr different adrenaline when you start. She's 2-0 and on the season with 5.60 ERA. But she has been really throwing great and feeling, uh, feeling pretty good. Let's take a look at the defense that has Barnhill uh, throwing to Taylor Edwards. It's Savannah Jaquish and Anissa Ertez, left side of the infield. Ertez is an absolute gem at shortstop. Stewart and Shaw right side with maybe the best outfield configuration we can find here. Victoria Hayward and left, the captain. Haley McClenney in center and Nicole Penley is a highlight waiting to happen in right field. All right, let's do it. First of two, Jesse Warren leads things off. Warren led off yesterday with a home run off of Trish Parks. Leaves the bat on her shoulder for called strike one. 474 batter. Jesse Warren, three for seven on the weekend with a couple of homers. This would be an important day for her. Currently uh, on the inside of the four top players, she is second in Athletes Unlimited in points. Second out of 57, the top four players every week are captains for the next week's set of games. We'll have a draft tomorrow to determine the teams for the final weekend next Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Two one. First four pitches of the game, and Warren hasn't offered it any of them. Yeah, it's a five-pitch walk. So 10 points for Warren. She's aboard with nobody out. And I like the fact that Kelly Barnhill started out Jesse Warren with that change-up first pitch, coming in 51 miles an hour, but continued to just keep falling behind after that. It's tough when you walk the leadoff with Pianca Selly and Vidalis coming up. That is now... Six pitches thrown by Barnhill, and only one has been a strike. We're starting to get some really cool numbers. We're four weeks into Athletes Unlimited, and 
Erica Piancastelli has always been among the leaders because of her power and her ability to be on winning teams. She's hitting 306 with five homers. That ball gets away from Barnhill, and that will allow Warren to take an extra 60 feet. Wild pitch by Barnhill. Uh, but Barnhill, for the most part, has been on winning teams. There's only one player that has more win points than Barnhill, and that is Abby Ramirez. So in terms of winning innings and getting points, in terms of winning games and getting points, only one player has done it better than Barnhill. On the ground, Ertez airtight. That is the game's first out. Warren took a chance and advances over to third. Hey, take a look at those total points. Barnhill is 11th out of 57. The lion's share of her points um, in that win points column. A lot of different ways to skin a cat here with Athletes Unlimited, but winning games and winning innings is the main way of getting a lot of points and moving up the leaderboard. When she was able to get those 40 MVP points from her performance yesterday where she started the game, it was pretty outstanding all the way through. Tori Vidal is off the end of the bat. That's going to allow the game's first run to score. Warren got a great break on that and just Barrel down the line to score and make it a 1-0 lead. But Dallas is out at first. There are now two outs. Bases are clear. So Jesse Warren scoring the game's first run. With Jesse Warren rounding the bases. Another 100 trees will be planted. Thanks to Aspiration. Aspiration Bank, 100 trees to drive environmental change. Here's Morgan Howe. When she puts the bat on the ball, great things happen. She strikes out a little bit. She's got 10 Ks on the year. But when she puts the bat on the ball, she can absolutely rip it. She's got the batting average at 421. 16 hits in 38 at bats. Laced foul. Go yard a couple times, three home runs. One this week. Oh, wow. Look at that play by Jake Wish, but it's foul. Most times, third baseman play themselves where they basically the ball's going to be foul. They don't have a chance to get it, but she's showing range and evil able to get it, even though it is foul. Saves the ball in two strikes. This one's foul right side. That last pitch was a drop ball called by Edwards. That's a pitch that Kelly Barnhill's been really trying to work on. People know her as being that up rise ball pitcher. Swung on and missed. Barnhill strikes out Howe. one nothing early lead team Warren captain Jesse Warren coming Alicia Ocasio half swing played beautifully by Shelby Penley one pitch and one out I'm excited for this matchup with Ocasio She's been just throwing so good. I mean, even taking that week off is still, I mean, had a no-hitter going into the seventh on Saturday. She's truly been so much fun to, fought, to watch, excuse me, with just her ability to change speeds. And she got hit. Savannah Jaquish, that's one way to slow her down. Jaquish was uh, hit with the pitch. That's the second time this weekend she's been hit. She'll take first base. That's 10 points for Jake Wish and a bruise. So a runner on at first. We have two pitches into the game. We have one out and one hit batsman. Here is Haley McClenny. Called strike one to McClenny. McClenny's been almost as hot as Savannah Jake Wish. 
Over the weekend, she is five for eight with a couple of homers and a double. Found a home here in the three hole for Team Hayward. Got on top of that one, 0-2. Well, just going back to Savannah Jaquish, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised more pitchers aren't throwing to her just with how much success she is having. I mean, out of her last eight at-bats prior to this, six of those swings were home runs. I mean, I'm probably not going to give you anything good if I'm facing you. You see Ocasio just dings her right away. Right back to Ocasio, goes to second for one. No chance you'll get McClenny. Ocasio elite defensively in that circle. She just fields her position so good, calmly. McClinney with the little slap, but on the money. You see Shelby Penley having to come over. Ocasio throws it over the base, and that's exactly where you want to end up. Perfect throw. Here's Taylor Edwards, swings at the first pitch and slices it down the right field line. This could be interesting. Look at McClinney go. She's being wait now. She stopped at third. So a two-out double for Taylor Edwards. And two runners in scoring position for Team Hayward. And this is just kind of that low drop on the outside part of the plate. First pitch swinging Taylor Edwards. McClenney obviously so much speed, sees that that drops down, picks up the facilitator. Man, she's a good runner. Just look at her pump her arms. She's, she's textbook the way she does stuff. Plays the game so hard. So an early opportunity for Team Hayward. And Samantha Shaw will bat. Shaw had two homers yesterday. She's four for eight on the weekend. Ball one high to Shaw. Shaw very dangerous. Ocasio knows it. There is a base open at first. Kelsey Stewart next in line. Let's see how Ocasio works to her. First two pitches have missed. Spot she hit. Looper, this is trouble. Coming on, making the play is Morgan Howe. believes in. We move to the second inning. Nadia Taylor leads things off. It'll be Nadia Taylor, Shelby Penley, and then Alicia Ocasio. one nothing lead, Team Warren. Jesse Warren began the game with a walk, came around to score on a ground out off the bat of Tori Vidalis. 0-2 to Taylor. Like many of these players, Nadia Taylor will go wherever there is a game. She's played over in Japan in recent years. Said she loved the experience of being a pro in Japan. Slice down the right field line. Will that stay fair? It does. Extra bases for Taylor on her way to second. And she's going to go for three. Look at Nadia Taylor go! And she is out. Very aggressive base running for Nadia Taylor. And she's out at third base for the first out of the inning. And this is kind of an out by a mile. I love that tag by Jaquish right in front. Doesn't allow her to get much on the on the base at all. And I like the fact you want to lay go to triple, but I think a double is where uh, where she should have stayed. Nicole Penley in right field. Quick shot to Ortez, who has a cannon, one of the best in the game. Anissa Ortez. Played at University of Utah. I mean, you can't paint a prettier picture than that cannon right to Jake Wish. So it's scored as a double for Taylor. She gets 20 points, but it's still an out. And here is Shelby Penley. Penley looking for her first hit of the weekend. 0 for 6. Get me over strike makes it three and one. One exactly a week ago today, she had that big clutch home run that gave them the go ahead with Team Osterman. That was her first home run of the season. 
And she'll have to come back to the left-handed batter's box. Home plate umpire Emerus Addison says that's a strike. Three balls and two strikes to Penley. Her younger sister Nicole out in right field today. This one deep down the right field line. Will it stay fair? No, it's foul. Makes her little sister chase after it. And she'll come back into the batter's box. Count remains three and two. Penley's from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, which is just outside of Albuquerque. You can get a good meal down there. One of my favorite shows was based out of there, Breaking Bad. Oh, love that show. Yeah. yeah. Wonder if they've ever seen Walter White. 3-2. Pokes this into left field, and Victoria Hayward misplayed it. Took a bad angle, and it's going to be extra bases for Penley. So a double for Shelby Penley. Back-to-back -back doubles for Team Warren here in the second inning. As soon as she makes contact with this, this thing carries a little bit. And Hayward just jumped a little bit early. I think this would have been a phenomenal catch, but a lot goes into it when it gets up in the air. You got that slight wind. We're in the Windy City here in Chicago. Just wasn't able to come up, make that catch. So a whole conglomerate talking things over. Middle of the diamond. This meeting brought to you by Mariner Wealth Advisors. So Barnhill has given up back-to-back -back doubles. She was benefited by the fact that Nadia Taylor was cut down trying to make her double a triple. Here's the pitcher, Alicia Ocasio. Hasn't had a hit since returning from her break from a week ago. She had to leave this shielded environment. Personal reason, she's been back. Pitched beautifully, but she's 0 for 5 with a bat in her hands. Changes that. That's going to be more extra bases. Coming around third and scoring is Penley. Ocasio to second. Now thinking about third. And she'll make it with a slide. Three straight extra base hits for Team Warren. What a weapon Alicia Ocasio is. Wow. This pitch on the inside part of the plate I think could be a little bit more in for sure. Ocasio able to turn on this bad boy right away, right to the wall. Obviously, so much speed gets out of the box right away, and this is a stand-up triple easy in her book. So Ocasio, who was among the leaders in points, needs an outstanding day today, and she could be a captain again. She's already got 52 points. Remember, she's going to get a whole bunch of points if she pitches the way that she normally does. Kelsey Jenkins, KJ, grabs a bat. Former All-Big Tenor up the road in Madison, Wisconsin, playing for the Wisconsin Badgers. Infield is in all the way around. One ball and one strike to Jenkins. And I had a conversation with Victoria Hayward earlier this morning when I was throwing a bullpen to Taylor Edwards, and she was just running I, her ideas off me with, I think I'm going to start Barnhill. I, I know I have Wagner to bring, but I think we can tag team this. She goes, it, it makes more sense to start Barnhill rather than bring her in. And I, I obviously couldn't agree more with that. I, I have a lot more trust in Wagner bringing her in with pressure in the end of a game. But you wonder how long the leash is with Barnhill. Jenkins spoils a good pitch. Yeah, this really is a wonderful roster for Victoria Hayward as the captain. Uh, the way that she constructed her team, the proof's in the pudding. They played two games and won them both. They beat Kat Osterman's team 4-1 on Saturday. They beat Janie Reed's team on Sunday 8-3. And I've really been impressed with the way that Victoria Hayward has managed her teams when she has been a captain. This is the second time she's spent a week captaining a team, making decisions. There's just a little bit of a different pressure that comes with that. Obviously, performance pressure. great spot but as well as just having to make sometimes hard decisions with with the pitchers or you're gonna kind of pitch by committee or when is enough too much little things like that good at bat by Jenkins doesn't look like Barnhill's got anything she can sneak past her this is where you wonder where's that little change you threw to 
Jesse Warren first pitch of the game at 51 miles an hour perfect placement that's when you want to see it you want to be able to pull it out in a situation like this eighth pitch of the at bat misses inside three and two doubles for Taylor Penley and a triple by Ocasio to begin our second inning. I've seen a lot of growth with Kelsey Jenkins since the first week of play. Having good at bats, swinging at good pitches. Barnhill's not easy to face, especially when you haven't got to face her religiously. She throws hard. Velo sometimes makes people uncomfortable. Jenkins, one of the youngest players in the league this year. And she is going to see another pitch. Barnhill's pitch count getting up there early. This will be her 40th pitch, and she's only recorded one out here in the second inning. In the air, will it be deep enough? Hayward underneath it. Here comes Ocasio. The throw, not in time, and another run scores for Team Warren. Great job by Kelsey Jenkins. Fantastic at bat for her. Yeah, this was a great at bat. Obviously pops it up, but battles so many pitches, big time sack. Every single run just matters so much. See Ocasio tagging up. With that sacrifice fly, Jenkins gets 10 points. That's one of the scoring categories that we rarely see. It doesn't seem like sacrifice flies happen very often here with Athletes Unlimited. Here's the number nine hitter, Morgan Zirkel, maybe the fastest player in the league. Zirkel hitting 364. see her compete against a couple others but yeah. 13th in points 13 out of 57 two balls and two strikes got her Barnhill picks up strikeout number two side is retired Bottom of the second inning, so far so good for Team Warren. They lead three to nothing over Team Hayward. Let's take a look at our Geico leaderboard, top 10. Kat Osterman has been a top ever since the very first week's worth of games. Uh, but a lot of movement. Alicia Ocasio already today is threatening to get into the top four. Savannah Jaquish, who has been so dominant. First time up, she was hit with a pitch, so she got 10 points. But each of the last two games, Savannah Jaquish has had exactly 260 points. She's got 520 points coming into this game this weekend. Nice smash up the middle by Shelby, or Kelsey Stewart, past Shelby Penley. Lead-off single for Stewart. So she is aboard here in the second inning. It's kind of that off-speed pitch. Kelsey Stewart stays on, playing with it, and Shelby Penley lays out. Obviously, I think even if she scoops that, Stewart enough speed to get up the line, but I like the layout. Second hit allowed by Ocasio. Lily Piper shows bunt. Piper getting a rare start. She's impressed coming off the bench. Former Ohio State Buckeye, eight hits and 19 at bats on the season. She's been a lot of fun to watch, Lily Piper, and she's just really stepped up into that role of being able to come off the bench and have success. And not a lot of players enjoy that role because there's more pressure to it. You're usually getting put in in a situation where you need to be able to step up.
swatted foul and out of play. And before the game, different ways to get loose. Kelsey Stewart and Lily Piper. <laughs> I wish I had those moves. No moves up here. <laughs> Golfed into right field. And positioned beautifully, A.J. Andrews makes the play. Piper hits a lot of Adam balls. I've been so impressed with her in the batting, batter's box. She hits it hard somewhere every single time. So that's the first out of the second inning. And here is Anissa Ortez. 238 batting average. Almost hit her. Gets away from the catcher, Bianca Stelli, and that allows Stewart to take an extra base. And Team Hayward needs to score three runs this inning if they want to win this inning. Warren has won the first inning with that one to nothing. But I love how that means something to these athletes. Golfed into right field. Here comes Andrews and another great jump for her. And there's two down. The very first Rawlings Gold Glove that was ever given to a women's softball player was given to that woman right there. And we've been able to see why. She still has it. Defensively, she's so good. She is, yeah. This is the laser. She's on it. I was showing you a play that I saw her make at LSU before the game where, like, it just my eyes were, like, lit up. Like, it's incredible what she's able to do, her range, her speed, her fearless mentality. Stewart going down to third. And she's safe. Good job by Penley to keep the ball in the infield. You like that decision with two outs trying to steal third? Hey, testing the defense. Prove that Pianca Stelli can make a clutch throw and that Shelby Penley can come across and get you. A lot of things need to time up right for that to happen. Lifted in the air, foul territory. Shelby can't make the play. And her sister stays alive. We have already seen one penalty rob the other when Nicole robbed Shelby. This time it was Shelby's turn and she just can't turn the trick. And she's laughing about it. Ball and two strikes. Runner on at third. Two outs. There's a ball and two strikes. Ocasio has not struck out anyone so far. It's really not her M.O. Let's the defense work behind her. Again, foul territory. Out of play. And this was last weekend where Nicole Penley was able to rob her sister in the Monday night game. If anyone's going to do it, it better be your sister, right? <laughs> Ocasio's 1-2. Again, popped out of play. Ocasio coming into this game, 28 and two-thirds innings of work, just 14 strikeouts, about one every two innings. But she didn't walk anyone. She's only got five walks on the season. Two and two. When her and Pianca Stelli have just worked really well together. Pianca Stelli has caught her a couple times leading up to this. On the ground softly. Scooped up. Vidalis wins the race to the back. Top of the third inning, so far so good for Team Warren. They lead three to nothing over Team Hayward. Uh, we're gonna get an opportunity to talk this inning. This is brought to you by Sparta Science. We're gonna go all access with Savannah Jaquish, who's playing third base right now. Uh, but she's gonna talk to us as she plays defensively against the top Ooh. third of the order for Team Warren. Jesse Warren leads things off. Savannah, how you doing? I'm doing great, you know. As well as I can be, down three. Yeah. So, <laughs> having fun. No, you got it. Come on. Yes. 
out number one, Jesse Warren grounds out to Anissa Ertez. Abby nice Savannah, I want to talk about you, but I got to ask you about Ertez. I've been so impressed with her defensively. Uh, what do you know about her defensively? What makes her so elite? Um, she can cover a lot of ground, man. She's definitely, her presence at shortstop is ridiculous. I feel so comfortable playing right next to her. Ooh, a little change up. Savannah, take me through, obviously, you've had a lot of success lately. Your last before this game, six out of the eight ABs, you've had bombs. What's felt good? Is there something different or it's just kind of all coming together? Um, I got it. I think, good job, hey. I think it's just getting behind the pitches are, is what I'm focusing on and swinging hard. So <laughs> seeing strikes and swinging hard, that's about it. Does it look like a beach ball by chance when it's it coming really at does. you? <laughs> ah. Ertez, what nice. a play! Yeah, Anissa like Ertez, back to back, wonderful place for her, two down. That was one step to her, her hand side, and I made it dramatic. <laughs> Just for the fans. <laughs> Wood chips are everywhere, it's fine. One, yeah, that's one question I will ask. What do you think about the wood chips and how they play? It is way different. Unlike anything I've ever played on before. Um, it's like it's like sand. So it slows down and it spins different when it hits the ground. So you really have to just stay around it as much as you can and don't be afraid to like block it up because it can get crazy. Tori got it, I got it. Yeah. Savannah, that was awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. That was perfect. This has been a rousing success here near one. Yeah, and they're sad that they're going to have to be calling it quits here in a week and a bit. There's only going to be one more draft, which makes me kind of sad because I always plan my Tuesdays around the draft on Facebook Live, so I love that. But they've been having... So much fun together, so many like legit activities that they get to do and learn and be together. And you know, it's a, we're in a, a crazy time in the world in the middle of this pandemic and everything, but this sport has thrived in these last four weeks and I cannot wait to see where it ends up going on, on the years to come. Oh, it's been necessary. Women like Victoria Hayward who's in the batter's box uh, getting ready for the Olympics that will return next year in Tokyo in the summer of 2021. This is an opportunity for players to get reps against the best in the world. Well, and it's not just her. It's there's 19 total Olympians. Kat is, on, is the only one that is trying to go for her third. Everyone else, it will be their first. So for, for me, I look at that. That's such a big deal. It's so special. You only get one kick at the can at this thing. You think the Olympics has been out for the last two cycles and it's going to be out for 2024. Excuse me, 20 out of the 56 athletes. Three balls and two strikes to Hayward. Yeah, team Victoria Hayward has been part of the Canadian national team since 2009 when she was 16 years of age. But this will be her first Olympics. When you think about it, she should be going for her third Olympics. That's the crazy part. Fans want to get even closer to the game, become a member of the Unlimited Club to cast votes for player MVPs, get access to our members-only dugout chat and bullpen cam, and interact with top point leaders after draft each week in members-only meet-and-greet sessions. Learn more about the Unlimited Club by visiting AUProSports.com and clicking Unlimited Club in the upper right of the page. Savannah Jaquish pops this one deep to center field. It's going to stay in the ballpark. Catch is made by Morgan Howe, and Hayward has to go back to first. So Jaquish put a charge into it. She's upset with herself, thought that she just missed it. Big out number one for Ocasio. Seems as if everyone on Team Hayward is committed to swinging early in the count against Ocasio. Well, an understanding for the most part, these pitchers are going to do everything in their power to try to get ahead of you right out of the gate, knowing they're going to have more success with being ahead in the strike zone, and then they can toy with some of their other pitches. There goes Hayward. 
Driven right. Well hit. This one's out of here by a mile. Haley McClenny, a two-run blast. And all of a sudden, we've got a one-run ball game. What a confident swing for Haley McClenny. Home run number four for her. And that's the first inning win for Team Hayward. Wow, and this pitch coming in at 65 miles an hour. She's able to get on top of this bad boy with a 72 mile an hour exit velocity. Absolutely crushes this thing. No doubt her as soon as she takes that hack. Wow. So the home run streak continues. That is now 24 for 24. Every game that we have ever played with Athletes Unlimited has featured at least one homer. Taylor Edwards swings at the first pitch. And Johnny on the spot, A.J. Andrews. Two down. Well, we expected this one to be a tight one. Both sides 2-0 and on the weekend. Coach about the home runs flying. Look at that. First week to second week to third week. And more than likely when today's over with, we will better what we had last week. Here's Shao. Samantha Shaw flew out to center first time up. One down, base is clear. Two and one to Shaw. Shaw was phenomenal as a college player at Oklahoma State. On the ground, should end the inning. Jenkins, side is retired, but damage done. about we've experienced so much in our lives we should be able to make these types of decisions and that's one of the main reasons as to why I love this league is that these women are in charge your performance trumps everything if you're the best or at the top you're a captain for a reason and you got to make some hard decisions and that's okay because the proof is in the performance Haley Wagner last five games she has been Sensational. Look at that. 15 to 2 strikeout to walk ratio. Called strike three. On cue, she strikes out Morgan Howe, who gives a backward glance to the home plate umpire. And we're off here in inning number four. Out number one. Well, and this is a backdoor curveball. Oh. So that's a pitch that late break at the end. Wow, that's probably one of the best backdoor curveballs I've seen thrown in this league. It's piping that at 66 miles an hour. That is not easy on the hands. Nadia Taylor doubled her first time up. Maybe feeling her oats. Tried to stretch the double into a triple, and she was out at third. That was pivotal because that was the first of three straight extra base hits. Team Warren got two runs in the inning, but you have to wonder what might have been if she hadn't ran into the first out. And I watched her this morning when I was throwing to Taylor Edwards. She was taking BP off of Mike Viermontes, and I mean, my head was on a swivel where these balls were going. She just takes monstrous BP. She's been elite for a while now. Originally committed to play Texas Longhorn softball at the age of 13. High drive, Hayward. 
makes the play. Like other days, maybe the wind blowing out a little bit more, that threatens the warning track. But it's nothing but a long out number two. Haley Wagner, she was the one who first slayed the Giant. She was the starting pitcher on Saturday when Kat Osterman lost a game in this format for the first time ever. Wagner went the whole way, seven innings, four hits, just one run allowed. And Team Hayward beat Team Osterman 4-1, to one, and that was the beginning of a tough weekend for Team Osterman. They lost again yesterday as well. Shelby Penley. I think maybe we had that meeting just a moment ago between Wagner and Edwards because this was the matchup that was pivotal in the game on Monday, won by Shelby Penley's team. She hit a two-run home run off of Wagner, which was the difference in the game that Wagner eventually lost. And it was funny, after talking with Wagner after they beat Team Osterman, I was just like, wow, you were fantastic. You were feeling good. She goes, I felt way better on following Monday when mm. we played Cat and I lost. I was like, what was it? And she goes, my change was just unbelievable. Smoked off the glove of Ertez. Two out base hit for Shelby Penley. Penley is aboard for the second time. She doubled in the second, and now a single with two outs here in the fourth. And this is a pitch screwball it's supposed to be on the inside part of the plate and drifts middle and this is just a rocket right at Ortez. This would have been a solid grab by her, but a lot of heat behind it. Here's the pitcher Ocasio tripled and scored first time up. Into center field sinking. McClenney has to play it on a hop. Station to station softball and Penley stops at second. So Ocasio, who had been 0 for 5 this weekend, is 2 for 2 in the first four innings. So much to think about, too, with the captains will be named after tonight's game. And there's so many different women that are in and around that top six, and it could just be one home run that seals a deal. Or you look at, at Victoria Hayward and Savannah Jaquish, they're both super close. So it's going to be right down to the wire to see who those captains are going to be leading into that draft tomorrow. This is an important bat for Kelsey Jenkins. One of the younger players here in the league had a great at bat last time, eventually flew out to left, but scored a run on a sacrifice fly. Now a chance to give Team Warren a run, and she's going to do it. Into right field. They're going to send Penley around third. Her sister, her throw's not in time, and it is an RBI base hit for Jenkins. And Team Warren, with three straight two-out singles, has scored a run. Really impressive work by Kelsey Jenkins. Well, and this is a change-up that's supposed to be on the outside part of the plate, and it misses middle. And because of that, Cage is able to stay on plane with it and just drive it right through the 3-4 hole. Obviously, Penley, a lot of speed. <gasps> she missed the plate. She had to go back and touch it, but Edwards didn't know and didn't keep the tag on her. Here's Zirkel. Zirkel going to play some small ball, possibly. Jake Quish, the third baseman, is in, having to guard again a bunt. Oh, and two. Zirkel struck out to end the second inning. That was when Barnhill was still in the game. Swung on and missed. Wagner retires Zirkel. Nine outs, nine times four. You get four points for every out. That's 36 points pitching. First ball swinging. Kelsey Stewart, humpback liner, caught by Kelsey Jenkins. Kelsey to Kelsey, out number one. I mean, that's another humpback liner. We've seen a lot of those. I know how much you love saying that. <laughs> that's how you describe it. It's not exactly <laughs> a frozen rope line drive. It's not a pop-up. I know. It's, it's just your humpback. lingo. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's H4 in my scorebook. Lily Piper. Piper hit the ball right on the screws in the second inning, but to A.J. Andrews out in right field.
We always talk about what a great athlete Ocasio is, able to hit, play her position defensively, and pitch. Well, Lily Piper was a great athlete in a different sport. She was a Division I basketball player. Hammer deep to center field, no doubt about it. Homer Lily Piper, her first. What a gargantuan blast to center field for Lily Piper. It was only a matter of time. Wow, this is just a hammer pitch. And you see Ocasio get frustrated, throw her hands up in the air because she knows. But those are the swings that you love for those types of players. She's been waiting, coming off the bench most games, but gets a solid start today, steps up to the plate, gets her first home run of this inaugural season. Well, that wipes away the potential for an inning win for Team Warren. They scored a run in the top of this fourth inning, but now it's been matched with one swing of the bat by Lily Piper. Ertez right back to Ocasio, knocks it down, doesn't panic, and that's out number two. So already three earned runs allowed by Ocasio. That would be negative 30 against her record. Negative 10 points for every earned run allowed for a pitcher. Well, and this is just you got to trust trust how you field the position. I mean, in my opinion, besides Danielle O'Toole, because she's one of the best as well, but Alicia Ocasio is such a natural because she plays so many other different positions. So the confidence of fielding the ball in the circle is there, even if there's a slight bobble. In the left field. That'll be a base hit with two outs. It escapes Zirkle. So Penley's going to go from first to second. I'm assuming that'll be a single and an error on Zirkle out and left. So the inning continues for Team Hayward. And now they're a single away from winning some inning points. Well, and this ball just takes a little jump. And you even heard Savannah Jaquish talking about how it plays differently with the wood chips. You have to be able to, as an outfielder, know that if that ball is going to jump up, there's no one behind you that's able to have your back. So you have to keep that in front of you. Here's Victoria Hayward, the captain, trying to help out. Hayward last time up walked and scored. That was in the two-run third inning. Should Penley score from second, this will be an inning win for Team Hayward. 0-2. Oh Victoria has a master's degree. Political science and communications. Jeez. Runners in scoring position. Hayward is six for nine. With two out, six for seven. Ice water in her veins. Penley going to have to hurry. Not in time. Here comes Piper. Penley. And Penley is out. Trying to steal a run. That's the game that we all expected. Two unbeaten teams, both Team Hayward and Team Warren, 2-0 and over the weekend. Fifth inning. Captain Jesse Warren bats to lead things off. It'll be Warren, Bianca, Stelli, and Vidalis against Haley Wagner. Softly to third. That is foul. Warren is now three for eight in this weekend's games with two homers and a double. She walked and scored back in the first inning. Wagner's got her set up, 0-2. 
Long throw, and Ertez decides to just eat it. Infield single for Warren. Ten more points for the captain. And the leadoff batter is aboard here in the fifth inning, already leading by a run. Well, I mean, you got an 0-2 count there, right? You have to be particular when you are ahead in the count against those hitters like Warren, Pianca Stelli, the dominant Savannah Jaquishes. You just have to have better pitch awareness. And, you know, it was a curveball that was supposed to be in on Warren's hands. You got to take that down in the zone a little bit. And that can be the hardest thing, I think, as well, when you face some of these hitters because they're just so spot on with 0-2, 1-2. And their reach is, is being able to go a ball to a ball and a half off the plate and still make great contact. It's one of the great things about this league. You just saw Jesse Warren on the first base, and she's making the motion that she wants to make the change. She lifts herself, comes out of the game, replaced by Ari Williams. So Williams will run for Warren at first base. Of course, re-entry. We will see Jesse Warren back into the game. Here's Pianca Castelli. Twice, Bianca Stelli has grounded out to shortstop. Monster hacks on the inside part of the plate. Currently seventh in total points. Seventh out of 57. Just like her mother plays for the Italian national team. One and two. Wagner beginning her third inning of work. Went one, two, three in the third inning. Gave up a run in the fourth. She has struck out two. You see Taylor Edwards call back to back curveballs in on Pianca Stelli's hands. I think with his one, two count. You see her swinging hard at that. It's either where you can utilize that screwball on the outside part of the plate tailing away or potentially go up in the zone, try to get in her head. She's going to go with that screw. Now, something that I enjoyed even today, throwing to Taylor Edwards in my bullpen. I mean, we were locked in throwing the hitters, and I didn't want to shake one of the pitches, which to me is, is a big deal because as a pitcher, you want to be able to take accountability when you're throwing stuff. But we were locked in and we're still just getting to know each other. Half swing, foul. You've been with some catchers at some point and you're like, you know, this, this isn't going to work. We don't fit well together. Yes. It's never fun. But, I mean, I will always take it upon myself to try to make them feel as comfortable as possible. Obviously, it can be intimidating catching certain pitchers with you know, a lot of things, history, experience. Off speed, way out in front, we'll do it again. But I take pride in making them feel like they're the biggest deal in the world because they're the ones that gotta make you look good. So you have to be able to just take ownership when you mess up, when you throw pitches that you miss, say, hey, that's my bad, I'll be better. Nothing in my opinion is ever the, ever the catcher's fault. Good eye, Bianca Stelli. Before that pitch, she had fouled off six straight pitches. Ari Williams, the runner at first. Three and two. All right, all of a sudden, Wagner, with the pressure on her, needs to throw a strike. Nobody out here in the fifth inning, one run game. Three, two. This has been a professional at bat for Bianca Stelli. This is where if you're Wagner, you wish you had that control over your changeup like you did last Monday. Because I think if she can get that at a 3-2 count and spot that well, the 11th pitch of the at bat would be a great pitch. Deep drive center field going back. McClenny runs out of room. It's gone. A homer. Two-run shot. Erica Bianca Stelli. One of the best at bats of the season. Lead doubles to six to three. 
And I would have changed speeds here. I would have. She's seen everything in her arsenal. You've gone in multiple times. You've gone away. This is in her wheelhouse. She can crush the inside part of the play. If you're getting this to the inside part, you better make that in or she's going to make you pay. Wow, such a pros, AB. 11 pitches, making Wagner work. Tori Vidalis, what's new? Swings at the first pitch. 0-1. She's got the perfect initials for what she wants to do long term. She is going to be a TV star. <laughs> Already gets a paycheck time and time again, working in television. Wonderful personality. Urtez knocks it down, and she gets Vidalis at first. I'm not sure she gets anyone else in the league except for Vidalis <laughs> on that play. Good play by Urtez, not to panic. That is the first out here in the fifth inning. Last two times we've seen Haley Wagner throw, she has been the best pitcher in the game. Not so much today. She's given up three earned runs in two and a third innings right now. This is uh, updated. Erica Piancastelli, home run number six. Only Savannah Jayquish with more. To put that in perspective, folks. This is the 12th game played for Jayquish and Piancastelli. Six homers in 12 games for Piancastelli. Eight in 12 games for Jayquish. Stunning numbers. We're going to see Jayquish lead things off in the bottom part of this inning. And Team Hayward's going to put their best foot forward. They'll have Jayquish, McClenney, and Edwards batting. Morgan Howe hasn't put the ball in place so far today. Struck out swinging, struck out looking. Into center field, solid single. That's been the case, more so than anyone in the league. Morgan Howe, when she puts the ball in play, it's a base hit, but that's the problem. Sometimes she strikes out more than usual. She's got 12 punch outs so far in the year. Yeah, and that's not a bad spot by, Wa by Wagner. It's in the inside part of the plate, 66 miles an hour on the hands. It's just great hitting. Here's Nadia Taylor. One for two, Nadia Taylor doubled back in the second inning. Two quick strikes to Taylor. Nadia's younger brother is a running back with the Green Bay Packers, Patrick Taylor. Nadia's been beaming about that over the last couple of weeks, coming up to me and saying, hey, he may be active this week. Let's see. Pretty cool. Shao backhands and wins the race to the bag at first. Good play by Samantha Shao. Two down. Let's take a look at our Geico defensive play of the game. Two down, runner on at second, Shelby Penley. Ball one. Penley hasn't been stopped so far today. Two for two, a double, a single, two runs scored. Off-speed pitch, 53 miles an hour, and Penley can't pull the trigger.
Two and two. Already this inning, a single by Warren and the homer by Pian Castelli. Lifted in the air. Foul territory. And the play is not made by Urtez. So Penley will get another swing. And you have, and you have someone running at you too. She kind of knows Vicks coming in hot as well. That's a play as a pitcher you want your defense to be able to make for you. Would have been a great catch. Let's see what Penley can do with an extra swing. Well, if Penley keeps the inning alive, Alicia Ocasio, who just like Penley is perfect this afternoon, is scheduled to bat. Three and two. Yeah, that six pitch third inning is a thing of the past. Haley Wagner strikes out Penley. Bottom of the fifth inning, Team Warren on top of Team Hayward, 6-3. to three. Savannah Jaquish wearing a microphone. Last time at bat, we listened in. Let's go all access. What's the plan here, Stelly? You gonna pitch to me? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, I missed it. I missed it. Ah. Oh. My bad. Oh, ah. Pick me up, pick me up. Savannah Jaquish last time out, flied out to deep center field. This time again, trying the center fielder, Morgan Howe. And how makes the catch about a foot and a half shy of the warning track. So a quick out number one to begin our fifth inning. Got a new pitcher to tell you about. Jessica Burroughs comes into the game. Well, I like that. I like that change. And obviously, Jesse Warren and Burroughs have the history of playing together at Florida State. And watching her throw the other day, it's the best I've seen her. So the comfort level of having a teammate from the past with you that fully trusts you, knows what you bring to the table, I love that. Jesse Warren, the captain. Making the decision between innings, she always has the option of going back to Ocasio. Ocasio stays in the game. She's in right field right now. And Jessica Burroughs, last time out, five innings, no earned runs. Lowered the ERA, almost two runs. Haley McClenney keeps on keeping on. My goodness, she's a hitting machine. Line drive to left, two for three afternoon for McClenney. And you just can't get her out. I mean, mind you, it's a pitch that's over the heart of the plate, and against a hitter like that, it's going to happen. Just such a sweet swing from the left side. I could watch her hit all day. Modern day Kelly Kretschman handles that bat so well with power. Taylor Edwards, one for two with a double. Double play candidate. Inning points on the line. Team Warren scored a pair, top of this fifth inning. The inning before was tied, so with rollover, this inning is worth 20 points for every player on each side. Laying down a punt. Burroughs to first in time. What do you think about that, Danielle Laurie? I'm a little shocked. She had a double her first at bat, but I guess really sees the defense back. Obviously, Warren's way back, respecting the power, tried to sneak one in. Heads up play by Burroughs. Well, the way this league works, that is worth 10 points for Edwards. It's a sacrifice bunt. 
But there are now two outs, and Samantha Shaw the batter. Shaw can put a charge into it. She's got five homers on the year, including two yesterday. Currently 20th out of 57 players in points. Good block by Bianca Stelli. Back to back knuckle change ups that Burroughs has thrown and that's one pitch that you just don't see a lot of pitchers throw is that knuckle and the rotation it barely moves at all so effective. Kind of R.A. Dickey style. I remember my brother when he played with the Blue Jays. I was always in awe of R.A. Dickey just by like watching the knuckleball and it almost looked effortless the way that he had to throw. I mean, this guy could two games in a row just keep him in there. He's fine. <laughs> High pop up. Who wants it? Jenkins makes the play. Welcome back, everyone. Athletes Unlimited Softball. We have reached the sixth inning. It is a six to three game. Team Warren is on top of Team Hayward. Let's take a look at our leaderboard. Kat Osterman still in first place with Jesse Warren, Victoria Hayward, and then Savannah Jaquish. Those are your top four. We're getting a chance to talk to Savannah right now. Savannah, curious. Obviously, the, the points are so big in this league. How closely are you paying attention to where you are on the leaderboard after every game? Um, I'm not looking whatsoever. <laughs> I feel like everyone's so good, so it changes like every single game. Let me get this slap real quick. Not a slap. Cool. If you were to be a captain, who'd someone that would be on your radar you would want kind of right out of the gate? Uh, Haley Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. I mean, I can't take Kat because she's already a captain. Would you want to be a captain? There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. Yeah, it's really different. I think I would want to just to see, like, what it's all about, you know? And I think it's a respect thing, too, to just show where you're at it would be pretty cool. Oof. Ah, that was... Lead off single, Alicia Ocasio. Ocasio's three for three. Yeah, she needs to settle down. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, I'm curious about your glove situation. We've seen you behind the plate. We've seen your first base, the third base out in right field. How many gloves do you have here in Rosemont? Um, I have three currently. Um, I, I feel like my, my whole bat bag is full of every position, just in case. Yeah. Who's someone you've kind of looked up to and has helped you with your swing at all? I know obviously Howard Dobson was at LSU and kind of helps that way, but was there someone growing up that kind of helped you out with that? Um, no, I, I would say it's all like Howard and Lindsay and... Oof. Um, yeah, just like a new swing. As you can see, I am getting underneath it more. Okay, Taylor shocked me. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely focusing on like turning behind the ball. Ooh. Instead of meeting the ball at contact point, mm -hmm. more turning my barrel behind the ball before getting on plane early. If that makes any sense. Can you hear me? Oof. I cannot hear you, but I'm sure you're saying great things. <laughs> no, we're laying out. We're, we're trying to listening. give you some space Fantastic. a little too. Here it is. She's going to hit this one. Mm. Good. Nice. McClenny so good in center field. That is out number one. I'm going to throw a name at you, Savannah Jaquish. I watch a lot of your games, and you're playing at third base, and when you're in the batter's box, and it reminds me of Andrea Duran. Are you familiar with Andrea and what um, she was all about back in the day? Yeah. Oh, my God. I love her. She was my GM at, from, for the Pride one year. So good. God, Zirkle's so fast. Dang it. Please don't tap it. Hit it hard. <laughs> I know this is when it's hard when you're talking to us when you have a player like her that can either drop the bun or try to kill you with her speed. Yeah, I'm definitely looking to first because she's just so fast. And pop it right to me. Yeah. Good job, hey. We're going to listen in. We're going to let you go again, Circle. I'm just going to listen. OK, awesome, thanks. Nice, hey. 
She'll do that again with two, yeah. Yeah, same thing. Go in two. You got one out. Turn my feet. Two? Maybe? Oh, nice. Two down. Out number two. Curious, Savannah, uh, we, you mentioned that you really respect the speed of Zirkel. So far through four weeks, who do you think is the fastest player down the line in the league? <laughs> Zirkel. 100%. Really? Okay. Zirkel and then Tori Vidalis is a close second. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm totally telling her you said that. Hot corner. Yep. Man, Jesse can turn on it, too. I love it. What's your favorite position to play, though? Do you prefer catching? Does it matter if you're feeling good in the batter's box? Um, I, I actually feel like I hit better when I play third, okay. which is the weirdest thing. It might just be my mind because I hit really well and I caught yesterday, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I like third. Ooh, come on, Blue. That's not a strike. I just like to hackle. <laughs> to know what's coming before. I do. I oh. know the signals up here. It's... <laughs> I will tr I'll try to say it quietly, but Jesse has like eagle ears. <laughs> Got a little curve inside. Oof. Nice, hey? That's good. This is definitely inside access. <laughs> I love it. Jesse Warren, she's tough. I mean, you have to change speeds on her. When you go in, you got to go way in, kind of like how I would attack you. Yeah. You can't miss. I don't know. I think that's a change up. Oh. Atta <laughs> baby. Atta baby. Savannah J. Quish, you just made my day. <laughs> awesome. That was cool. <laughs>Team Warren doubling their pleasure over Team Hayward. Six to three is our score. Fans head to AUProSports.com to get your athletes unlimited gear and check out our fan zone to download your watch kit and participate in pick'em games. And don't forget to follow us on social at AUProSports for exclusive inside content. Just had a fun half inning with Savannah Jaquish. Talked us through a, an inning defensively at third. Here's Kelsey Stewart. Stewart, Piper, and Ertez, the scheduled three against Jessica Burroughs. Kelsey Stewart, not only a great high school softball player in Wichita, Kansas, also was an elite All-State cheerleader, competitive cheer. She was a tumbler. That's one of the mm. positions with competitive cheer. You got the base, you got the flyers. She was the tumbler. And I was the flyer. <laughs> <laughs> Smoked into right field, and once again, beautiful positioning. This time it is Ocasio making the play. Except the scouting reports of both teams have been very good today. I love it. First off, you see the swing that Warren, but the excitement she has. I don't know. I think that's a change up. Oh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. The whole package. Lily Piper hit her first homer of the season last time up. She's had two wonderful at bats. Hit a line drive with hair on it to right field in the second inning that was caught by A.J. Andrews and then put one over the fence in center off of Ocasio in the fourth. Now facing Burroughs for the first time. Lily Piper. I told you the Piper played basketball in college. She played for the Akron Zips. Zipper was invented in Akron, in case you're wondering. Nice. Uh, her freshman year, she put 24 points up with nine rebounds in a Mid-American Conference game against Buffalo. Also scored 18 points in the WNIT against Bucknell. Played in 29 games, had a couple of starts, but gave it all up to play softball at Ohio State. I think that was a good call. 
she was dominant at Ohio State. I remember watching her play shortstop, three-time All-American. So the walk puts Piper on at first. And Ortez is called back to the dugout. She'll be replaced by Abby Ramirez. Abby Ramirez not in the starting lineup. We have seen her start for every team that she's played on, either at short or at second, but now coming off the bench. And she's hit with that pitch. Burroughs didn't mean to. That was soft, but Ramirez will take her base. So two consecutive batters reach against Burroughs without the benefit of a base hit. And it's that off speed. And I like the fact that she just kind of left her elbow there, but see the knuckle spin on it. Her elbow is up for sure, but I mean, it's better hitting the guard than anything else. Big opportunity for Team Hayward. Starting to get late. They only have five more outs to play with. Bottom of the sixth inning. Runners at first and at second. Three run game. Nicole Penley. He's got a good hitters count, 2 0. Oh. Three and oh. And Jesse Warren, the captain, wants to have a word with Burroughs and the catcher, Pian Castelli. Well, and obviously, it being late, bottom of the sixth inning, not a lot of outs left. And you want to try to kind of kill the momentum while you can. You see Taylor McQuillan warming up in the pen. Yeah, there's still a lot of points hanging in the balance here. You imagine the way this game has been played, that the winning team is going to get the majority of those MVP votes as well. So Jesse Warren can't goof around too much longer. Burroughs can't find the strike zone. Four pitch walk. Bases are loaded without the benefit of a base hit. Two walks and a hit batter with one out and the bases are loaded. And now the top of the order, Victoria Hayward. This is like a worst case scenario right now. I mean, bases loaded, haven't given up a base hit, and now you're going to the top. It's one of those strange dynamics, Danielle. It, it, obviously, college teammates, Jesse Warren, Jessica Burroughs. Warren's the captain making decisions. Sometimes you got to make tough decisions. Fly ball, center field, deep. How surrounds it, makes the play. Piper tags from third. The throw, not in time to third as Ramirez takes an extra base. That's an inning win for Team Hayward. They score another run. It is now a 6-4 to four game. Sacrifice fly for Hayward. She gets a point for the 10 points for that. Well, and every single run counts here. The later on you get in the game. Takes it dead center. Piper knows how is way back. Here comes Jaquish. Oh, boy. Ooh. A homer and Team Hayward to take the lead. I hate to say it, but I'd almost want to put her on just to, to have the force. But to just have the force at any base, ah, it's, it's a pickle. I'm, I'm questioning myself up here. One ball and one strike. Jaquish, hotter than a pepper sprout. Two homers on Saturday. Two homers on Sunday. 0 for 2 today. I think you just attack her extremely careful. Try to make her chase something out of her comfort zone if you can. But if you get too far behind, bringing something over the heart of the plate is not good with runners on the corners. I'm totally thinking outside the box here. I would pitch around Jake with. I would pitch around McClenny. I would even walk McClenny with the bases loaded to make it a one-run game and bring up Taylor Edwards. I don't want to pitch to Jake Wish. I don't want to pitch to McClenny. Yeah, you got to pick your poison. Which one? I uh, need. You want to go to Jake? I'm going McClenny? all the way to Edwards. Depends if you want a lefty or righty. She clearly wanted no part of Jake Wish. All right, so the bases are loaded. It's a two-run game. That is the third walk of the inning for Burroughs. And here comes Haley McClenny. I tell you. 
There's someone in the world who would consider walking McClenny with the bases loaded just to take the bat out of her hands. Yeah, but you got to look at what Taylor Edwards has done today. She laced that double. Bases loaded for McClenny. Game hanging in the balance. And I just know you, you got to hope she rolls it to an infielder and you can roll a double play. Foul, third base side, one and one. Or, yeah, excuse me, there's two outs. You don't even need to roll a double play. I just pitch carefully. <laughs> I'm stressed. I don't even know the outs, and they're right in my face. Already an inning win for Team Hayward. Pops her up. It's going to be playable. And the wow. catcher, Bianca Stelli, saves the day. Yeah, Burroughs put herself in that spot. Burroughs dug herself a hole. She walked three and hit a batter, but she was able to get Haley McClenney with the bases loaded. Here comes Bianca Stelli. It'll be Bianca Stelli, Vidalis, and Howe batting against Haley Wagner. Wagner's given up three runs so far in four innings of work. Here's our league leaderboard up to date. Savannah Jaquish has jumped into the four spot. Hayward one spot ahead of her. Jesse Warren in the two spot. And Kat Osterman, who we'll see in our next game, is the leader. In the gap, left center field. That'll make it to the wall. Pian Castelli's going to have to bust it to get the second. And she makes it with the dive. So another... Extra base hit for Bianca Stelli. A double gives her 20 more points. She homered her last time up, so she's had a nice day. She's sure good. I mean, this backdoor curveball left up a little bit in the zone, and I was even talking with the pitchers about this earlier on today with just elevating the ball, whether it's a screw or that curveball or backdoor. If it's up in the zone, it's easier for the hitters to be able to get on plane with that. That's why the importance of being able to establish something low in the zone is huge. Work that screwball down, work that curve and back door because hitters can sometimes just kind of stick their bat out there and get lucky with something that just drifts up in the zone. Wagner working to Vidalis. You expect to see Ocasio pitching when we get to the bottom of the seventh inning. I... I keep who's in there right now, and then if I get a runner on, I have her ready to rock. Vidalis off the thumbs, squirts it into center field. They're going to send Bianca Stelli, but Clenny's throw! Not in time, and another run scores for Team Warren. Bang, bang, play at the plate. Bianca Stelli barely beats the throw. It's a good piece of hitting the inside part of the plate, that curveball. And Bianca Selly sees that it's down, pumping her arms to try to get in there. McClinney, obviously. Something you got to think about, too, is the catchers cannot block the plate, or it's going to automatically be catcher's interference. So Taylor Edward ha Edwards has to receive the ball and then get the tag. And I see tips in. I see fingertips. What a wonderful call by the home plate umpire, Emerus Addison. But just to confirm, this play will be reviewed. We have the capability, why not use it? So Mike Rayner, third member of our crew, is going to join us. He is our replay official, and Mike is going to get a chance to make the definitive call. The call on the field was safe at home. The next camera, I believe, has the best look. This camera right here. And I've got her hand on the plate before the tag. I'm going to stay with the call on the field. Thank you, Mike. All right, definitive call. Mike Rayner, our replay official, thank you so much. And Erica Piancastelli, when she gets the official word, is going to be ecstatic. There it is. So score the run. Give an RBI to Vidalis. A single move to second on the throw. 
And the lead is back up to three. Back-to-back -back base hits against Wagner in the seventh. Piancastelli's double, Vidalis' single. Morgan Howe. Two games on Saturday, two games on Sunday, and then two on Monday. That's the way the league goes. In between, you have a draft every single week on Tuesday to reestablish new teams, and then practice with your new teammates, and then you play over the weekend. We'll have one more week of Athletes Unlimited softball next week, and then we will close it down with closing ceremonies. Chow, first out of the inning. You see Pianca Stelli just take a quick look back, notice where that's at. I mean, you have to go on this, okay? It's completely different if it's just a super close ball game, but you have to pressure the defense and make them step up and make those big plays, right? Yes, I respect the fact that it's Haley McClinney in center field, but I'm going to challenge her, and I'm going to make her step up and make a big play and have enough confidence in myself that I can round the bases and get there in time. And it was a spot on throw, and Pianca Stelli beat it out. Was that a fair ball? Nope, it's foul. Jake Wish was thinking she'd made the play of the day with a quick tag of Vidalis going back to the bag, but it's foul, so a dead ball. And it was a little, I, I thought it was going to be a little, you know, something with Vidalis because she gave her the shout out for her speed. So I thought, hey, with her on third. Before the ball gets to the third base bag, it's the home plate umpire's call. Nadia Taylor, one and one. If either Nadia Taylor or Shelby Penley get on base against Haley Wagner. That means Alicia Ocasio will bat. And Ocasio already has three base hits today. She'd have a chance to win the game as the pitcher and also have a four hit afternoon with a triple. And Nadia Taylor got hit with that pitch. She swung at it and it's a dead ball. It's a strikeout, but Dallas will have to go back to third. That was awkward. So the strikeout for Nadia Taylor, she gets hit with the ball. And once she gets hit with the ball, she immediately has a dead ball called against her. He swung at it, obviously, that is the rule, and it goes off of her body, so there's no way that Vidalis is going to be able to just scoot home on something like that. That can't feel good if you're Taylor. Oh. Strikeout, but then <laughs> the ball hits you to boot. Insult and injury. Here's Penley, two for three. The Dallas an important insurance run on at third. So when we go to the bottom of the seventh, Team Hayward is going to be down a minimum of three runs. One and two. Bianca Stelly the double, but Dallas the single. Wagner's retired two in a row. Full count. Ocasio waits in the on-deck circle. Oh, 
Chased ball four. Shelby Penley is retired. Couple of strikeouts for Wagner. Casio now in right field. Team Warren trying to protect a three-run lead, and Jessica Burroughs has kind of been all over the place. Burroughs in the sixth inning walked three and hit a batter, so she gave up a run without the benefit of a base hit. And now she's being asked to pitch the seventh and final inning. It's not just a win that's on the line, but also inning points as well. Team Warren scored a run in the top of the seventh inning. Into center field, solid single. Edwards starts the seventh with a single to center field. I got to make a change. I got to put a pinch runner in here. Nothing against Taylor Edwards, but if you're trying to make a comeback, I think it's important. We're going to bring in Emily Crane. And you so, wonder how long the leash is. Yeah, the captain is Jesse Warren. She's the third baseman. She's right now in the circle having a, a bit of a word with Burroughs. But clearly she wants to keep Burroughs in the game. She's got options. Alicia Ocasio is in right field. She pitched the first three innings, making the first four innings. Ocasio did give up three runs in those four innings, so she wasn't perfect, but still. She's had a really good season pitching so far this year. Here is Shao. Ball one. Shao's put the ball in play three times. Nothing to show for it. And Burroughs falls behind every single batter. Her, her money pitch is that off speed. When she's able to really get that, it makes everything a little bit more effective. But not being able to locate that has made it difficult. And it's that knuckle change. It's a new pitch for her. A four-pitch walk. So a leadoff single, the four-pitch walk. Runners at first and at second. And now, for the rest of the inning, the potential tying run will come to the plate. I got to go with Ocasio. That's, that's what I think as far as pressure. That's what I would like to see. I mean, we did see Taylor McQuillan throw yesterday and came in coming from the left side and was hitting some good spots. And I think that's who they're going to go with. Yep. So Burroughs is done. McQuillan comes in. And Jesse Warren going out to the outfield to have a conversation as well and talking directly to Ocasio. And whatever Jesse asked, Ocasio said, I'm okay with it. I give her one out to see how she does. And if she walks someone or puts another runner on base, I got to make that change. I got to put my trust in Ocasio with just how she's been throwing. But after seeing McQuillan throw yesterday, she looked pretty good, was snapping that curveball off into righties, away from lefties, keeping it down in the zone. The only thing I will say is, Kelsey Stewart tends to hit the away pretty good. And if you leave it elevated, that's a pitch that she's able to get on top of. So I'd be going in before I'd be giving her anything up in the zone away. Now just looking at the lineup, the way it plays out right now for Team Hayward, McQuillan needs to get three outs among these next four batters. You got Stewart, you got Piper, you got Urtez, and then Penley. After that, then comes Hayward, Jaquish, and McClenny. So there's a little bit of wiggle room, but you got to end the game before Hayward comes up again. Runners at first and at second. 
Three-run game, nobody out. Bottom of the seventh inning, Kelsey Stewart. Right down Broadway. Ball gets away from the catcher, and uh-oh! Dangerous play. Crane got caught between second and third. She was going to go back to second, but she had to go to third because the runner at first shall left her no option. Oh, my goodness. That was almost disastrous. You just have to be more heads up than that. If you're stopping in your track, she didn't even notice that shall was coming. But if you're coming in in that pinch running situation, you have to be better. Those runs are so important, and it does not matter right now if you advance them. The importance of seeing what Kelsey Stewart can do is important, not being that first out of the inning at third base. Three and one. So McQuillan, four pitches, only one strike. Quality, three and two. Fifty points goes to the team that wins the game. Lifted in the air. It's going to be playable. Wow, Zirkle almost had that flip out of her glove. Morgan Zirkle hangs on for the important first out of the inning. You got to remember, Lily Piper has had a home run already. One swing of the bat, but ooh, baby, this little ice cream scoop down on the bottom. All right, this is an obstacle. McQuillan will have to pitch to Piper, who has been locked in this afternoon. Hit a bullet that was caught in right and homered for the first time in the fourth inning. Walked and scored an inning ago. Ball one to Piper. After Piper, the light hitting Abby Ramirez and then Nicole Penley. And I almost kind of pitch around a little bit with the fact that you have Ramirez and Penley and say, okay, do I get a bases loaded and try to double off here? Beautiful pitch. Too soft. Piper confused, left the bat on the shoulder. And I only say that because one swing of the bat ties this ball game up with Piper. Another beauty, two and two. And that's a battle back. I like it. And this is where now you can get a hitter guessing, right? You've been able to throw something soft for a strike, then you go with the screwball away. Now you can play with her. Got her! What a bit of pitching right there by McQuillan. Three straight quality strikes and Piper goes down. Two outs. Yeah, what a clutch sequence of pitching by Taylor McQuillan. Falls behind, kind of way out, not even close. Rise up in the zone, still for nothing. She's able to get that change up for a strike. Goes with that screwball on the outside part. Pretty pitch. And then climbs the ladder a little bit. And you see her excitement. I like to see that from her. It's a big strikeout. Last hope for Team Hayward is Abby Ramirez. You see the infield in. Obviously knowing you got two outs, she's gonna put that pressure, she's gonna hit the ball down in the ground, try to use her speed. Three and oh. Hmm. All right, well McQuillan either needs to get Ramirez or the next batter, Nicole Penley. Because after that, you got Victoria Hayward. Game needs to either end here or the next batter. Three and one. Ball gets away from Bianca Stelli. What's Crane doing? Oh my goodness, she got hit with a throw and got bailed out. Emily Crane was caught in a rundown between third and home, but she survives to score the run. Oh my goodness, if the game had ended on that. Yeah.
And I mean, I, I guess if you look at it, you're lucky that you got hit. Because if you're not, you're dead out. Yikes. Ugh. I don't even know if I want to watch this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she has had hurts. nine lives on the base pass this <laughs> inning. So that ties the inning. Both Team Warren and Team Hayward have scored a run here in the seventh. And that'll do it. Taylor McQuillan, a tip of the cap to her. Just fantastic. Comes out of the pen and retires Stewart, Piper, and Ramirez with two strikeouts, and Team Warren wins. I love it. I think that was just so clutch by McQuillan to come in in that pressure situation. But most importantly, having Jessica Burroughs back, she's able to use that curveball to her advantage coming from the left side, snapping that baby off. Other batter's box, tough pitch to hit. And you see Jessica Burroughs going up, giving her a big hug because she's like, thank you for bailing me out. <laughs> All right, the captain of Team Warren, Jesse Warren, is going to join us for just a minute. Hey, Jesse, congratulations. Great weekend for you. You guys win all three games. I got to ask you about this seventh inning. You chose to go with Burroughs and then McQuillan. Uh, what was your thought process with McQuillan coming into the game? Yeah, um, we had a lefty up, so I wanted McQuillan to go in and kind of throw her curves away from the lefties. And then she got the out that we needed her to get, and I decided to leave her in because she she threw that better that batter very well. So I had confidence in her in the plate or um, on the mound as well as I had confidence as the other two pitchers. But um, decided to leave her in because she was throwing well. Jesse, take me through the fact that just you're a captain yet again for the second time, and what are your thoughts with the Power Rangers and how they performed <laughs> throughout the weekend? Yeah, our first game, um, we, our bats needed to wake up a little bit, but we kind of had a talk after that game, and our bats woke up, and we hit phenomenal the next two games. Um, we had a lot of power in our lineup, as you guys could probably tell over the weekend, um, but I think they did an amazing job at the plate. Our defense was very sound, and our pitchers did a great job, too, in the circle. Hey, I have to ask, I mean, having you, Pianca, Caselli, Vidalis, and Howe together in a row is pretty dominant. What do you think about that four-pack together? Yeah, that was kind of the goal was to get us four together back to back to back to back. Um, I think we all have power um, and we're dangerous for, like you said, um, in the lineup to see us all together. So uh, we did our job and um, planning on hopefully, if I'm captain again, uh, going with the same thing. Pretty sure that's a done deal. Congratulations, <laughs> Jesse Warren. You're phenomenal today and all weekend long. Thank you. That is Jesse Warren who pulls all the right strings, pushes the right buttons.